Welcome to another Lightroom tutorial. In this video we will check out Lightroom's new masking panel in detail. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file, you can find the link in the description and let's go. So with the recent update Lightroom has reworked the local adjustments. Those new tools are very very helpful, but before we can get into that, I do want to adjust a few basic things. If you're just here for the masking, check the description of the video to quickly navigate through it. So first let me straighten this image. You can see I already have cropped off some parts of the image. Just make the subject a little bigger. Then looking at this program, this looks pretty good. We have a very soft look because the blacks aren't really black here you, as you can see. Um, I do want to bring up the whites a little bit to get some more brightness just like that and for a little more contrast I'm going to drop the shadows. I'm not going too crazy since I like the soft look of this image but that looks pretty good. And to keep the soft look I'm also going to push the blacks a bit. Just like that. That's great for those pastel color tones. Then we could add a little bit of dehaze, only a tiny amount here. Also let's add some vibrance. Okay, now we have the base adjustments done and it's time to check out the new masking panel. All those new local adjustments can be found under this masking button right here and you can see there are a few things you can add. We have a select subject, select sky, which is an AI based selection which kind of works pretty good. And then of course we have the classic tools like the brush, the linear gradient, the radial gradient, color range, luminance range and depth range. So let's begin with something pretty basic. And let's say I do want to adjust the foreground. In this case I'm going to simply apply a linear gradient and as usual you're just dragging a gradient up like this, as big as you want it. Lightroom will now show you an overlay until you push a slider, then it is invisible and if you let go of the slider the overlay will come back again. Of course you can just deactivate the overlay. In the beginning I didn't like it but at the moment I'm using it all the time. So I'm leaving it activated and let's adjust the bottom part here. I do want to make this part a little darker so I'm just bringing down the shadow slightly and maybe even the exposure just a little bit. All right that's it for the foreground. Now to do something different I do want to adjust the sky. In this case, usually I went for a linear gradient, but we do have a select sky mask as well. The problem here is it is hard, even for me as a human, to separate the sky from the landscape in the back. So this mask will have some problems as you will see when I click on it. Of course, this might take a while depending on your system. As you can see on the left side, there are parts missing off the sky. So we need to add this back to this mask. And therefore you can see we have this add button and when pressing it we get the same masking tools as before. So in this case I do want to use the brush tool and let's adjust the brush size with the mouse wheel. Just add back this part of the sky. So just like this. The problem now is we do have also the subject within this mask. But don't worry, here we can just use the subtract button and again we get a list of all those masks available and here we just say select subject. Alright, that's looking pretty good. There are a few halos but that's not a big deal since I only want to affect the very top part of the sky. So let's hit the subtract button once more and here we choose a linear gradient. And then let's just drag it up like this. So you see only the top part is affected here and now we can work on adjusting the sky. First off, let's see if some clarity works good in here. And let's bring down the highlights so we get more detail up there. And maybe a little saturation. Perfect. So as you just saw, the sky selection did need some more adjustments. That's also because for this image that was super hard to select. On other images I have to say this mask did work pretty good. But now let me show you something positive. I am creating another new mask and this time I am selecting the subject. Again this takes a while but here Lightroom does a really good job. 
And what I want to do with this selection is to first make the subject sharper by increasing the texture. So that looks pretty good. Then we could also increase the temperature to fix the blue color cast in this area. And we could even introduce some more saturation here. All right, let's see. Maybe let's play around with the whites. And let's drop the shadows. Awesome. With this mask, we didn't need to adjust anything else. The subject was perfectly selected with a few smaller halos here and there, but those weren't really affecting anything. So that was pretty good. Now let's work on the foreground some more. For this reason, since we mostly have very dark tones in here, I'm using a luminance range mask right here. And at this point I have to say, I don't really like what Adobe did here because the previous version of the luminance range mask was kind of easier to use. Now its features are a little more hidden than it was previously. Basically with those boxes on the left and the right, you adjust the luminance range. So I want to select only the dark parts. That's why I'm dragging this box down to the left side. So this looks like a very, very good selection right here. Now what you can do with those arrows is you can make the edge softer or harder. So if I bring it down, we get a harder edge. And if I bring it up, we get a softer edge. So more or less of the luminance range is affected depending on where you move that arrow. I am going to move it down a little bit. And that's like a very good spot for now. Again, you can see we do have selected the subject as well. Not a big deal. We just go to subtract, select subject. All right, and if that's not enough, we can always go to subtract brush. Let's adjust the brush size again using the mouse wheel. Then I'm just brushing over a few parts, which I don't want to change. Seems like the flow and the density need to be turned up. That is much better. All right, that looks like a decent selection. So again, let's adjust the foreground and bring down the shadows. This actually might be a little too dark. I also want to bring down the contrast. And actually let me fix that color cast in here because it looks very, very blue. So I'm going to bring up the temperature and I'm going to drop the saturation. All right. That looks much better. Now let's see. We have adjusted the subject, the sky, the foreground. Let me try to use the color range mask. Once you have selected this mask, you can see the eyedropper appearing. And just like before, I can select the color tone, which I want to affect. In this case, I want to change the blue tones a little bit. Again, once you clicked on the image, you can hold down the shift key to add another point. Just like that. Let's refine the color range. That is looking pretty good. We don't even need to subject the subject this way. Forest is also not affected in here. So let's try it like that. And the first thing I want to do with this selection is to make the blues a little colder by turning down the temperature. Very, very slightly. All right, and what we can do next? Maybe let's bring down the whites just a little bit. Okay, I think I do want to add some negative dehaze in here. Just to give this image some more of a mysterious look. And let's bring down the clarity a bit. All right, that looks awesome. And I guess that is pretty much it for the new masking panel. Sadly, for this shot, I cannot show you the depth mask. So I hope this masking tutorial was helpful. If you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And now let me finish the post-processing for this shot. So next up in the HSL panel, I do want to bring up the blue saturation a tiny bit. All right, let's head into the color grading panel. Here I want to give those highlights a slightly orange color tone. Let's make it a little warmer here. And I do think I need to play around with the saturation here. That looks pretty good. And of course we can also check out the calibration tab all the way down. And here let's drop the blue primary hue to get some more intense red tones. 
and make the blue colors a little more cyan. Okay, let's bring up the saturation as well. Perfect. And finally, let's sharpen this image real quick. Awesome. Compared to before, much better, much more vibrant. We do have a much sharper subject. The forest in the foreground doesn't have this ugly blue color cast anymore. And we have some nice cyan tones in the background. So usually I would go into Photoshop, apply some more adjustments and use the Nick Collection plugin. But I really, really like this shot and I'm really satisfied with the results at this point already. So that's it for editing this image. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, as I said, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.